I'm Sydney. And we're from Berlin. Um, and we do a study of small angle neutron scattering of magnetite nanoparticles in dilute solution. So, um, So nanoparticles, especially ferromagnetic nanoparticles, are of um, high interest right now because they have a lot of applications, particularly in data storage and some in biomedicine. Um, so people really want to know about how they interact with one another, what's going on. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. We synthesize um, whatever kind of particles we want to look at. So in this case, iron oxide 7 nanometer nanoparticles. Um, at Oberlin, and then we use various instrumentation to characterize their magnetic properties and their size, um, their composition, which sometimes is what we want it to be. Um, so for example, we use transmission electron microscopy to take pictures of them, and you can see how when they're left alone, they like to self-order into hexagonal uh, closed packed arrays. So each one of these little dots is one nanoparticle. Um, and you can make all kinds of different shapes during the synthesis, but ours are just monodispersed spheres. They're kind of boring. <laughs> um, then one of the main things that we do is we take the particles to NIST in uh, DC, in Maryland, um, and we use their nuclear reactor and their 30 meter small angle scattering, small angle neutron scattering instrument to um, do some neutron diffraction off of our sample in various solutions, um, which is really useful because we want to do two different things with this. We want to try to differentiate between the core and the shell of the nanoparticles, um, and we can use that doing using we can do that using different mixtures of solvents, um, and we also want to try to isolate the nanoparticles so that we can see individual behavior. So, um, yeah, so this is an example of what our raw data would look like. It, um, it comes from a 2D array in the detector. And over here you can see just the beam stop in the center makes that mark. And then this yellow ring would be the characteristic peak that shows inter-particle interaction. So that's how we know that the particles are interacting with one another in whatever solvent we're using. And you can average this 2D array into a 1D plot. Um, we have a bunch of those. And for the experiment that we did, we used three different solvents. We used echosane, hexane, and deuterated toluene. And they all had different amounts of incoherence scattering, which is how much of the neutrons scatter within the solvent and aren't actually scattering off our particles. It's just the background. Yeah, yeah, it's basically the background. And we wanted a low incoherence scattering, but what we have are two high incoherent scattering solvents, namely um, hexane and microsane. And so the signal from the incoherent scattering, when it approaches the signal from our particles, it makes the data go negative, which we can't use. And so for a lot of our experiment, we had kind of a problem with the background matching the signal, and so it would just drop our data to a range where we can't use it. And yeah, so that gives us looks like this. a lot it looks of problems like it just because off. the graph just drops off. And so um, then we determined that deuterated toluene was probably the best solvent to work with. And we tried to run a few scans to see if we could get single particle behavior, but the particles tended to um, prefer to order into small clumps of particles, especially when we put them in the magnetic field. And so what we did was we ran a series of scans of um, dilutions by volume. And so we have a 1% dilution, 10 times diluted from that, 20 times diluted from that, and 100 times. And you can see that there's an interparticle peak clearly in the 1% dilution, but then that it persists all the way into the 100 times dilute solution which is something that we didn't expect. And so we then fit them and looked at the characteristics that are functions of dilution and which are not. And that's good for future work so that we can know how much we have to dilute them to see single particles and how much signal we'll get from that. And so then we um, also wanted to see how many particles how large the clumps were and how we could try and avoid having the clumps by freezing or using a different solvent. And so 
that was basically all of the theme time we had at NIST. And so now we're working on trying to see, trying to look at different solvents for the future and making different kinds of nanoparticles. We've been looking a lot at uh, manganese oxide and trying to make those kinds of particles. Maybe they'll be easier to isolate. Um, so we're studying their magnetic properties now. We do um, vibrating sample magnetometry to see their moment, and you can see, you know, what kind of magnetic they are and how magnetic, and if they're magnetic. Hopefully they are. Um, so that's kind of what we've been working on since NIST.